Now this video is going to be about parging and I'm parging the inside of a cellar here. It used to have a coal bin. They put a new gas furnace in, they got rid of the coal so I had to block it up and just clean it up. That's all I did with this. But it's the inside of a cellar. I want to show you how I do it. The next two videos are going to be about uh, parging on the outside. And all these videos were one day jobs. Now today we're inside of a cellar and this is a poured concrete cellar and they were using it as a coal bin. Right here is where the coal came out. So they want me to block it up and just just clean it up because they got a new furnace in it. So I'm going to show you how I do this. So, so I got this hole all out of here. Now I'm just going to do this. I'm going to brush the walls down. Made out of concrete so, so what I do now Wash it all down. We're just going to fill this hole in. And we're going to do it any old way. Because we're not worried about it. I already kind of know what I was going to do. That's going to be my block for that one. Just like that. Shove that in. to use your hand, use your hand, it'll work. Shove it in there. Throw all that stuff in there. Outside the road crew was ripping a road up. I got a piece from there. Use the hand if you have to. Throw it in there. Like that. Boom, and bang, a boom. An old rock, that'll work. That's it until I, I plaster over it. I want to make a point here. Uh, see behind this wall, this is wire lath. This is the wire lath. A piece fell down right here. Anytime you put wire lath up, there's a good chance you're going to get a void behind it. And when you get a void behind it, not only does it do anything structurally, but you're going to get termites. This is a piece of wood I took right off of here on this old coal bin. So personally, do not like to use wire lat on a stone foundation. If I have to, I'll build it out. So I blocked this all up, but the point I'm trying to make is you got to strategically know when to use a stucco wire mesh and when not to use a stucco wire mesh. So you don't always have to use a... You just have to make sure you wet it real good when you're plastering over everything. the first coat. Maybe that's the only coat the owner wants. I don't know yet. I'm going to ask him. That hides all the sins. You see that? Let it and throw it on. Throw it on. Same thing here. Wet it first. Put it on. If you don't wet it first, it's not going to stick. We wet it first. Right over the wetness. Doing that, you don't need no bonding agents for this kind of job. See that? So now we're just sponging it up with the sponge. We could come back put another coat over it if we want, but that's not what they want here. They just want to clean it up. They're thinking about selling the house. I'm back on the job a few days later. Usually I'd like to come back and, and check for check marks. And here's one right here. What happens with traditional cement is it shrinks. So I was expecting one down near the where I filled it in, but this is the only spot I got one. So what I like to do is just do this. Just wet it good first. 
go over it with the cement like that and sponge the hole in. Now there it is, it hides that that little check mark. And that, that, that'll work, those check marks will appear all the way up to a month later. When you do these kind of jobs, I put the first coat on, the owner looked at it, he said, that's good enough. I don't need any more. So I figure uh, honest weights and honest measures, just give the guy what they need and that's it. Now today's project is we're going to patch up the side of this uh, foundation. See where it all fell off and it's still falling off in places and then they try to patch it. So we're just going to kind of clean it up a little bit. Alright, so we're just getting this getting rid of all the loose stuff just like that. It's a block foundation. Gotta keep looking for it. If it stays there, we're going to leave it there. If it doesn't stay there, get it off. All the loose stuff right out of here. Crack the old stuff down. Keep going. Get all the loose stuff off. And if it doesn't come off, you leave it there. And we gotta wet it down. We gotta make sure it's wet. And you plaster it. When you wet it, it's going to stick. It's very easy, easy plaster or parging. We just go right over the top of it, just like this. I'm going to do everything. first coat on. Actually the only coat we're going to do, we're, it's real wet because it's October. Now if this was August it would be a different story how we're doing it. But we're just flattening it out right now. We're going to come back over it later and smooth it. So that's what it looks like when it's done. Now here's another foundation I'm going to fix. You see right here under the porch, when they poured this porch uh, this is separate from here. That's why you get that crack. The only thing this guy wants me to do is pretty it up. So I'm just going to go around, patch it up in here. Any big holes I'm going to fill first with that cement doll. And then the rest I'm just going to pretty it up. I'm going to wash these cracks out. So if I want to make small fast patches, I use this stuff. Rapid set mortar to make but what this does is uh, it dries real quick and I don't have to be playing with it. I could right at the same day go over the top with the final plaster and make sure I wet it again. You gotta make sure you wet it. Don't wet it, it's not going to stick. You go right over the top of it like that. Force it in there. Not a big deal. If you're not good with a trowel, get a rubber glove, shove it in that way. Sometimes you're better off with a rubber glove, you can really get it in there. So I use a sponge float with that, it kills it. Just get a, a sponge like that and go around. That's going to fill that hole in. So make sure it's wet. You can get your stuff and kind of shove it in there with your glove. It's not a big deal. Just like that, just keep, just keep shoving it in. You don't have to use no tools, nothing crazy. Just get it in. Just get a sponge, a little water on it, and we sponge it. Just like that. Hides all that, those sins. You see that? So right down here, I'm going to plaster it with cement doll. 
Same thing, just like regular cement. Put it on there. It's got to be wet first. If it ain't wet, it's not going to stick. Same thing. Get all the loose stuff off. We got ourselves a big hole here, and I know a lot of folks ask me about what to do with a big hole. Will you wash it all out first? All the stuff out of it. You have to wash it. You know, fix anything, you have to wet it first. So, we're gonna fix this hole up. You gotta wet it first, like I told you all the time. And then, Throw it in there, just like that. Don't play with it, just throw it in. And if you want to add some stuff, add it in to fill the hole. I'm just showing you that this way because if you're an amateur, even if you're a professional, this still works. Throw it in there. Get some other stuff to fill in, boom, 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 just like that, if you want to use your trowel, you can use your trowel, get it all packed in there, just like that, as long as it's wet, you're good. So, I'm just going to go over and leave it rough because you know why? I'm going to go over with another coat later. I'm just going to leave it rough. So, I'm back here. And this is all dry. About two hours later, I'm going to wet it real good. No secret to making plaster stick or parchment stick is you got to wet it real good. I'm going to put a coat right over it. Just like that. See that? Nothing fancy. soft sponge here. I'm going to put it in the water. Just start going over the top of it. Just like that. Just a little bit of it all out. So that's it. Just Giving it that squirrel finish. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this cement that I mix stronger more than two to one. I'm going to put it in there like that. I'm going to add a little water and make a paint out of it. You see that what I'm doing? Here we spray it with the water and we paint it. Okay. Make a lot of sense. I'll be back. Okay.